Bruce O'Connor let you that spawn this. How much ain't of broad the will Argus and privilege or in her fad will oop the horn here in Hockey and Shaw Conan Tespontus Oscar. You're all very welcome to this. Thank you. Thank you. To this very historic occasion for the Kenny family. They were 80 years in business, happily and as it happens, it's 50 years exactly since we had our first ever John Behan exhibition. And uh, we are so privileged and honored to have our dear friend uh, of many years, of many years, but he's here now in the guise of the President of Ireland to open the exhibition. So I am going, no second, no, please. <laughs> so would you please give a warm Galway welcome to Michael D. Higgins. Well, for a mere vaga to Hamasha Sultan Firkin Fulcher Shin, Agus in our areas privileged the and Sharks can tell sponsors John B. and Avaskar Kohifikur. Privileged in our area in Marvin Samantor and Scott A. As Kamala Shin, then the on a lock, the Koloda in the Halina, her food on a young show, the Pierce of Father. May I say first of all what it's a very great pleasure to be associated with the opening exhibition of John Behan. As I've just said, uh, is a, an artist that has been so generous uh, with other artists. But also very much I do congratulate uh, uh, Tom and the Behan and the Kenny family for their long standing uh, support for the arts uh, in its different forms. Um, 80 years uh, is uh, eight decades is a long time, but it is. Uh, I'm delighted. He said, "We got grand Spanish to read us the the Plymouth Theology of the Canadian Library Saramak Galan Higgin Irish." And I know that that uh, uh, heritage will continue. Um, uh, we I also owe a special debt to and Sabina and I are associated with John Behan's installation. Uh, in the grounds of Oris and Uthron. There are a number of new sculpt public sculptures there now for people to visit, including, the, for example, the Acorn, which was a commissioned piece for 1916. There's a piece there, the birch trees, which are sown in relation to the signatories of the, the Declaration of Independence. And then there is a very special one for which we owe John uh, a great date, and that is a tribute to Sean O'Casey and Plough on the Stars, mm -hmm. and so on, which we so Mila Buik is shin. But uh, I think it's very appropriate then uh, that this exhibition is taking place here in Kinney's uh, Bookshop and Art Galleries. It's a collaboration, as, as Tom says. It's one of the advantages, if there are advantages of advancing years, that I can remember most of those early exhibitions <laughs> and been associated with them. It's also a very great pleasure to see so many friends here and so many people that I know are associated with the arts. Uh, Corbett's reputation in relation to the arts didn't fall from the skies. It was brought about by many people living in the most precarious circumstances, which had a powerful belief in the arts in its different forms. And I look forward at the end of the week to coming back and uh, being part of the launch of 2020. Uh, John Behan's career, as I've said, is a very long and distinguished one. And I think... Uh, the different themes that have informed his work, Irish mythology, social history, and indeed very, very much the Gartha Moore. But I think uh, what is most important now uh, is the whole new dimension that you see to his work uh, in, in his deepening of the theme of migration. I've seen John's, I've, I've visited John's uh, installation in, in Athens, and I think uh, it's a very moving time. I, I, I would be very irresponsible of me not to say that migration is the great debate uh, uh, in, the, in the world, and it's one of the great failures of the European Union that we now have in off one of the islands of Greece a sea barrier to stop people who are fleeing from different circumstances. Um, and also what is worse than that is that we have a logic occasionally surfacing from those who speak of protecting Europe from those who are seeking to escape 
from conflict and escape from deprivation. I think uh, this collection, uh, I, know, I look forward to in a while about seeing uh, uh, the pieces, but they record movements of people ranging from famine ships to contemporary refugees, as I've said, from Africa and victims attempting to cross from Mexico into the United States. Uh, what I think is to the, again, uh, at the credit of, of John Behan, is that of course his work is in practically all the major collections around the world, and indeed we have his work in Orson Uthron, and I have described the Star of Plough, which is the latest which we've installed on the grounds of Orson Uthron, very much under the initiative of Sabina, I have to say. Uh, I think that we have had the advantage, John, uh, Sabina and I, of knowing John for quite a long while. Uh, and uh, from the time of the foundry on, uh, we in, our, in Galway, when we were living in, in Galway then, uh, in many cases, the arrival in Galway of people like Breen Burke and John Behan and all of the others was a great boost, I would say, that it, was, it became a kind of a leaven in the artistic bread of that is called man. I think the many awards that he has received are obvious. When the, he became a member of the RHA in 1990. He's a member of Estona, which is the greatest tribute, because it is a tribute that is accorded to you on the judgment of your peers. But what was very exciting was, way back in those years when we knew him first, was John was a founder of the New Artists Group in 1962, mm. and he went on to become a founding member of the Project Arts Centre in Dublin in 1967. I think Sabina was discussing with me that going off to an exhibition with, with Michael Caine and others. And John, therefore, has been just such a big, so it's a contribution that has been long standing and always substantial. Mm. And I, I think, as well as that, what I think is that he has always kept a strong connection with what was happening in the public world, of the need to uh, confront history uh, honestly in relation to the, the famine is something that, again, is ha that happened in a setting with known reasons, sources, and consequences. And among the consequences were most serious was the enforced migrations. I think, uh, as well, one of the things is that people, even in the throes of movement, even in forced movement, are interested in song and literature and music. And these themes make their way into the different pieces that you will see. And I, I think uh, one thing that I think is very, very important is John Behan's commitment to the belief, I often think back uh, to that uh, simple book, but which we all carry around with its blue cover, The Necessity of Art by Ernst Fischer, <laughs> about the importance of art uh, uh, in society. So we are, I am open a formally opening, an exhibition of an artist of the first rank, of whom we can be proud, but also somebody who, who has brought into his art and into his conversations and life with us all a moral and ethical concern. Uh, sometimes uh, people would describe Ireland as people reference to the 70 million worldwide of people who have Irish connections, or the 47 million in the United States. What I think John has, in fact, actually dealt with is the wrenching that was involved, the exile, the leaving, the expressions, if you like, of grief and that were involved, and then as well as the celebratory pieces. But also he has reminded us is that we are all, in the end of the day, as I have said somewhere else, migrants in, in time, and thus you have great engagement with mythology and our wrestling with chronos. The famine ship is very significant in John's work. It occurs again and again. It's the basis of the National mm -hmm. Famine Memorial in Morris in Mayo. That goes back to 1997. But I think uh, what is most recently, I, I'm thinking now of the migrant boat off Sicily in 2018, which I had the pleasure of unveiling at the United Nations in New York uh, last September. And there a bronze sculpture by John Stans in the gardens of the United Nations headquarters in New York 
entitled Arrival. It honours the generations of people who immigrated in search of a new life. And looking at it with our heads of state in New York, I th was hoping that it would remind them of the duty to realise that, <coughs> that humankind uh, on the planet is not of its nature sedentary. The majority of people have always been moving. And therefore that migration and the movement of people in time and space is something that makes a moral call on all of us to uh, be open in our categories of thinking and sensibility and sensation and experience. Last year I opened John's exhibition in Kilcock, our gallery called Kildare. It was reflecting a retrospective exhibition reflecting over 50 years of output. I often think as well, sometimes I used to always say, when I used to open exhibitions in Kenny's in the old days, in many cases, is that if you were doing a mixed exhibition of visual and uh, sculpture, the people were inclined to sometimes almost leave their glasses in front of the sculptures. <laughs> Poor old sculptures used to get, uh, get together. But they were always in danger. <laughs> you have a happy eye out for it. <laughs> but, uh, but the point about it is, is that here we have, in fact, we are in fact celebrating a wonderful artist with great pieces. And I hope that you do take the, the time to go and, and relate to each of them. I had a conversation recently with John Berger, John Berger's brother, about the, we were discussing what happens and been a means discussion about what happens when you are in front of a piece of art. Let it do what it can to you because something special happens in relation to a person who is actually gazing at the work. I think that what for me as I finish, I want to say this because <clears throat> things have changed in Greece. But once uh, John's visit to Greece, are ones of anxiety and despair, of human beings in flight, of lives in flux, of lives torn apart, and really of what Anna Arendt reflects to us, we might call the excluded other. I remember visiting with John, and you remember when we were, I would, we went to greet a young man in a wheelchair and so forth, and in fact those in charge of the, the station wanted me almost to move on in many cases, as if the young man, the migrant with the, the further difficulty of being in a wheelchair was kind of almost embarrassing a state visit. It is very, very important uh, that we eschew that kind of indifference, which is the source of so much uh, agony in the world. We have a responsibility to be engaged in these issues, and it is a privilege to be in the presence of an artist who is engaged I think as well in relation to what is happening in our world. My hope is that Europe will turn, that it will realise that most of its states are composed of people who were at one stage or another migrants or invaders or some kind of people who occupied spaces for different purposes. I think that we have an obligation uh, to uh, uh, accept uh, those who are undertaking these long and painful journeys. I think that, uh, as well, in relation to history, it is something that is uh, uh, very, very important. And we are migrant people ourselves. We have people who are in all these parts of the world that I mentioned. And sometimes I think, in many cases, we should pay more attention to what is involved in the exits from assumptions in a place for one's point of origin and one's difficulties of re-entering points of destination. But the one thing I'm certain of if is at the end of all my times teaching in University College, Galway Times, the Reveille, I enjoyed so much, is that I was left with one concept that I felt had been neglected so powerfully in the social sciences. It was related to the mistaken assumption that the world is sedentary when it is in fact a world of movement. And it is that everything that is exciting Everything, well, not the things that are most exciting in literature and music and all of the arts have come out of a space of transience. These are people who have left where they were a point of stability and are moving and entering into a point of the unknown. And in that space of transience, what is inherited property is not important, but people are forced together in their humanness through intimacy and contact to actually ask what it is to be human. That's why artists are very, very important.
to remind us of the moral point, not of our reasoning, but even more importantly, of the music of the heart. So may I congratulate you on my say what a pleasure it is to be with you all as we celebrate yet another wonderful piece of exhibition of his work. I'm afraid I must have got a bit excited uh, when Michael came in because I completely forgot to mention his lovely wife, Sabina, <laughs> who is extremely welcome again. And it's wonderful to have you back. Thank you. I have to say it's a measure of our president and how he works that this event that he was talking about, meeting the migrant in the wheelchair, has been recorded. And it's on the wall and on the plinth over there, uh, the president and the migrant. And it's a wonderful, wonderful image. Now, I want to introduce you to the man who created that image, John B. Well done. Thank you very much, Tom. And thank you, everybody, President Higgins, Sabina, and the staff of the embassy, who are <clears throat> so wonderfully courteous to all artists who ever had the pleasure of visiting the or Oris and Uttara during the, <coughs> the uh, present uh, regime of President Higgins. Um, I just want to say thank you very much, everybody here in this room, uh, for coming along here tonight. Uh, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to be able to do work that's even more so when people come along and show an appreciation, as I think everybody here tonight has done to me personally. Uh, not alone to me, but my friends and my family and everybody connected with the arts. Because, as Michael said, a migrant didn't arrive somewhere out of the blue, out of nowhere. It's been going on for thousands of years. I go to Greece quite a lot, and you can see the traces of the migration of history there very clearly. It's stamped on the landscape and in the people. And I just want to say once more, thank you very much for coming along here tonight. Well done, John. Well done, John. Well done, John. Thank you, John, and thank you, everybody. Uh, can I just say, <clears throat> this is a very, very important statement in a very important exhibition. And it's very difficult with such a crowd to see the sculptors. So I honestly recommend to you in the next three weeks to come back if you can and walk around and see because they're three-dimensional pieces as well as the wonderful paintings. Uh, and you're very welcome. But I highly recommend it. It's a treat. For the Mahagi Kerfan.